Straight. Okay. Don't go too far. This episode is going to be a lot of rant. Um, this is just angst in me. Remember when I said uh, this? That, let me bring that topic up. I, I have no intention. I, I, Casey and I said, it's, it's just like, you know, God of vlogging, we know that. I, as a creative, that's not where I want to go with this. I, I'm not, they can have me here. Yes, I did say that. What people who are not artists, who are not, who are not formal, formally trained artists, don't understand is that somebody comes along and invents a new type of art. Claude Monet invented uh, Impressionism. Um, Andy Warhol was pretty much invented the. Uh, the copy pasta approach to pop art. Everybody, and then what comes after that is just another take on it, another iteration, another perspective on that aesthetic. And this is pretty, this is pretty much what I'm doing with this vlog. Um, yes, there are nice statisms. You can't avoid nice statisms in a vlog. In YouTube vlogging, uh, to ignore that uh, is to ignore the. Uh, the high state standard of excellence and be the best, look at the masters of their craft. Now, where I'm, where I don't agree on some of the things that uh, Casey Neistat does so far as content, tone, um, I really wish he would um, broaden the, the emotional experience beyond just uh, fun times and happiness actually maybe possibly explore some of his demons uh, explore some of his be more vulnerable to the audience and that's kind of weird I want to go uh, with this uh, with this vlog I'm much I'm very comfortable being vulnerable lots of therapy that's how that's how I got there lots of therapists so I'm comfortable just Opening up, and that's ex and as somebody that is an advocate for people with ask because I have to be open. I have, I have to share my experiences so that you can identify with something that's real, and that's the basic gist of it. I'm addressing this right up front because there is going to be some some schmuck in the comment section somewhere in the future here's your explanation don't drop poop in the comments it's been a real freak out amongst youtubers about apocalypse i'm not subject to uh the whims of advertisers advertisers because i've determined that the priority is to serve the community over raking in that sweet youtube money that said you know along with this i i I've heard rumblings about some search algorithm changes on YouTube that now I have to respond to and do things I'm not really happy with. Change, I have, you know, people are changing up the, the thumbnails with you know, obnoxious clickbait. Emoji overnight explosions. No! F*** that shit. F*** it. That's not what... what, what Aside from the my f my, my f bomb, I run a classy production. I, I mean, look, I mean, this Brooks. This came from Brooks Brothers. I got good taste, and I'm not gonna go in a direction that compromises on good taste. Otherwise, I'm just gonna turn this camera off and open up a, a haberdashery or something that you know, where I can keep it classy. I'm not, I, YouTube as a division of Google is pushing for more revenue and more, and pushing for uh, creators to make content that's more uh, advertiser friendly. And it's not, first off, no advertiser is gonna want to, I mean, there's such a niche interest that sometimes my filter fails. And, but that's in the interest of you, the community, and deconstruct 
uh, what YouTube does so that you as a consumer of this content, of this media, a more uh, educated uh, consumption of. I'm just worried again. Uh, I'll be slammed to the very bottom of the rankings because uh, of the lack of commercial, uh, commercial appeal of this content. <laughs> Title for this episode is I had to do it, and what I'm touching upon is some unpleasant things I had to do. Kind of put me in a funk. I'll just drop right into I'm evaluating the relationships in my life. Um, in this episode, you, I did speak about my friendships, and I that made me think more about uh, the quality and the quantity and the ratio of those two, and. I'm done with pseudo friends, uh, friends that it's hard to read uh, what their intentions are. If they're, they're just hanging on for a certain number of Facebook friends on their list, I don't know. Or if it's just something that I, some energy they're giving up that I'm not picking up because of my, my, my ASD. So I, I've had to think a bit about this and it's been kind of a really sucky thing to go through uh just write down a list of people that you've been friends with for a long time and then just send them off a note saying we're done and i'm not you probably know there's somebody in mind uh it's not just that particular not just one particular person it's a bunch of um, kind of sketchy friendships that I've accumulated over that I just had to let go. Uh, it's it's hard for me to let go because I don't have. It's hard making new friends when you're when you have when you have autism. You're already fighting up with against your social your awkwardness. You're fighting against your. Uh, Nonverbal cues, whether they really are interested in being friends with, friends with you, that's a whole bunch of stuff. And I tend to hold on to friends that don't deserve to be friends. And that's been just over the past couple of years, that's been a hard lesson I've had to learn. You know, it, it's, it's sad. It's, it's just sad to have to do this. But we all do this at phases in our lives, and they tend to uh, coincide with uh, turning points in our in our development and growth. I mean, at, in our adolescence, we're acquiring friends and we're indiscriminate about who they are because we, we desperately need social engagement. Then somewhere around your, around 25, 26, that's your about your quarter century. Now. You've grown and matured. Now you think about what you need for uh, for friends that are just going to be stalwarts in your life and back you up. Some work out. Some are lifelong, and some people grow. People change. People, uh, relationships drift apart, and this is what's happened. And but the upside it has allowed me. By letting go has allowed me to open up to new people in my life. Uh, Ilya, bro, you're awesome. You've been awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, in fact, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, segue into something a bit more, bit more positive because I, I <laughs> last episode was a crusher. I didn't. I wanted to. I didn't. This episode, I don't want to be an entire crusher. Thank you, Ilya. He's been helping out uh, sourcing, uh, getting me in touch with uh, independent labels, including Ghostly, who um, who represent Taicho and Lucene, uh, a bunch of others that I have used on this channel. Uh, I want to use an entire one to base an entire film on, uh, a narrative film on, and it's good to have that. And just. He's opened me, has introduced me to his world. I've made, I made connections, at least 
four people in two days. Um, it, amazing, amazing. It's after struck after being let down by people. It's nice to finally have somebody that will offer to do a solid and follow through on it. Um, at least, you know, in, in terms of as a creative collaborator. That's the big thing is um, what's been kind of kept me in a funk is doing this, doing this whole thing with this in the back. Uh, I actually know I need a collaborator. I absolutely know I do need one. But finding that right, that right person, just the right person you're going to marry, uh, bring into your business as a partner, um, that's serious shit. And you can't be done uh, overnight. It can't, particularly if you're doing, um, you're having a collaborator on camera, you, you don't want to have the, the typical, you know, fake program thing where something on NECN where they're just going through the motions and they, this, you'd feel, you could feel the awkwardness between the co-hosts. That's not what I want with this uh, vlog. I don't want, um, I, I, it has to feel natural. It really does. So, you know, I have to make those, those connections and, and I have to build the, that rapport. And that's not easy. That's not easy. I, I'm, I'm a likable guy. I'm guarded. Particularly these days, I'm a lot more guarded and it's hard for me to open up. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, there's some good stuff happening and, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Ta-da! Yeah. Yeah. This, I have not been able to wear for the past two years. I've been too much of a, too large and in charge. Uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite suits. Um, I have a closet full of fantastic suits, uh, but this says pig stitching. This it says a canvas chest so that it Boost with you. Have not been able to wear it for a very long time. I've lost 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Let me sit down. I lost 20 pounds. That's a lot. <laughs> that is two inches off my waist. And I can't, I mean, I'm still. I'm gonna plug away at it and everything, every piece of tailored clothing in my closet will fit by this fall. I might be able to uh, pick up some new items. Uh, definitely looking for some uh, camel hair blazers, got some tweeds, a lot of tweeds, but we're out of tweed season right now, so. But I got nice suits and I'm a happy guy. Actually, if I had some spare cash, I'd actually run out right now and get a share cycle suit. I uh, did. You need one for the summer. Yeah, you just need one. In fact, yesterday was the uh, Kentucky Derby. That's what you wear to the Derby. And all summer, if you're, if you're a prepster or a truster like myself. But, hey, hey, hey. I haven't worn a suit. And that was two years. And <laughs> I, and this, it makes me sad when I can't wear my suit. Uh, it just, they make me feel very dignified and, and um, very dapper and posh. And it's just great for my, it's a self-esteem booster. If you're, if you need, a, you need a self-esteem pick me up, Put on your best clothing and go up and uh, do something nice for yourself. And that's my day um, for today. Uh, enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy this Sunday edition. 
and we'll roll out with some uh, Dan Mason. I'm on a mission to reach all Aspies on YouTube and all neurotypicals on YouTube. You can help me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel.